In this video, I'm going to dive into heat maps, what they are, and when you should use them. Heat maps are visual representations of data. It is a quantitative user research tool that is color coded to represent a user's behavior on a specific web page. They can tell you where a user is clicking, how far they've scrolled down the page, or even where they look. The hot sections attract the most amount of attention, and the cold sections attract the least amount of attention. Running heat maps before designing and launching a website redesign could save you from creating a site that doesn't have a high conversion rate or that your target audience finds tough to navigate. Also, heat maps should be used during the discovery phase of your conversion rate optimization campaign. It is meant to inform A-B tests on the changes to page layouts and functionality to better match users' preferences. Let's walk through the types of heat maps. Scroll maps show you the scroll patterns. It can tell you how much information is available on your page without scrolling and how far people scroll before leaving the page. It also tells you which sections users spend the most time on. The hotter the section, the more users have viewed it. This data can help determine where you should place call to actions or important information. Stark changes in color on your scroll map can also help determine which sections of your web page lose visitors' attention. It will also allow you to understand if your users will read long form blogs or short form blogs. The founder of Conversion XL put it well, sudden strong color changes can indicate that visitors think whatever follows is no longer connected to what came before, called logical ends. These are sharp drop off points that are hard to see with just Google Analytics. This example from Crazy Egg shows Khan Academy's website. They state, when you analyze your scroll maps, Look for call to actions that are hidden within these darker sections of your pages. The call to action is near the bottom of the screenshot in the green section, which means only half the visitors scrolled down that far and saw the button. Hover mapping shows where visitors hover their cursors while reading over your web page. The hotter the area, the longer the user hovers their cursor over it. This data shows how users navigate your website so you can place important elements in a location where they'll receive the greatest amount of attention possible. You can also figure out if non-essential elements are distracting your visitors from the important ones. Click mapping shows you where most people are likely to click on a website. Click maps display the part of your page that visitors click on the most. The hotter the section, the more frequently your visitors click on it. This data can show you if visitors care to click on your call to actions or other buttons that allow them to take a desired action. It can also show you if they're getting distracted by non-clickable elements. In another Crazy Egg example, the area that gets a lot of clicks is brighter, so the more clicks an area gets, the brighter it appears. Attention mapping uses the customer's browsing data to display which part of the page receives the most attention. It shows areas of the page that are viewed the most, taking into account how far they scroll and how long they spent on the page. Pros of using heat maps are that due to their colors, it's easy to quickly glance at one and understand what's showing. This tells you more than Google Analytics would since it allows you to see things that would otherwise be unnoticeable. It also allows you to identify areas for A-B testing and fix low conversion areas. The cons of heat maps are that heat maps tell you what happened, not why it happened so it's important to pair it with qualitative user research. Heat maps do not show you if users use their keyboard to tap through form fields rather than their mouse, so you'll need to use other tools for form analysis. Lastly, people can read a lot into each click. For example, it's hard to tell if a person clicked on an element twice means something or if it's an accident. Now let's jump into session replays. Session replays allow you to record video sessions of visitors moving through your website. It's similar to user research, but doesn't have tasks and audio. Session replays are qualitative, since you're trying to understand bottlenecks and usability issues, such as where do visitors give up and why didn't they complete that action. It's especially helpful to watch session replays when people are filling out forms on your site. Google Analytics can track these events, but it isn't as insightful. If your page is poorly performing, you can see how they interact with your site. For example, how fast they scroll and read the information. A limitation to session replays is that they're time consuming to watch and synthesize. Also, you can misinterpret the context of the recording since the visitors haven't directly told you their intentions. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the Playbook UX channel for weekly whiteboard videos.